Have you promised yourself you'll never do FEMA again in your life? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. <laughs> it's been quite a learning process. Yeah. It's like getting the bridges on the forest service is like. Well, that's <laughs> what I was thinking, you know. Though they've changed. It's we'll see what flea miles do. But. It's tough. <clears throat> So who's renting your former house? So or living have, in it or whatever. We have original Jake. <laughs> um, Jake McCambly. Yeah. He worked for the hut. He, he was in the huts with Hannah. Um, yeah. So he's been there since 2019 when we started renting it. Okay. Um, and his girlfriend is now there. She was former trail crew. Okay. And um, Jake is Cito. He's actually trained to now. Like he's never worked before. <laughs> in the house, um, but he's a uh, yeah a climber guide trail runner. So yeah, it's a good good group. So when did you move over to the? We moved in um, October of 2019. Yeah, well, okay. yeah, so just before yeah just before COVID. So it's funny when people you know things shut down and we're cleaning out our house. It's like well we did that, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we had a good compound. You know our. Down, so. it was good. It was good. Uh, all right, well, another word. Well, here I'll call this to order. Camera is going. So. It's this is self. Uh, self. What do you mean, go ahead? Said it's autonomous. It's a robo, robo thing. <laughs> um, review minutes. So moved. Did Brian do his homework and read them before? Uh, I tried. I didn't. I actually read them after the party. We said I was supposed to be looking for places. I'm like, oh yeah. Good. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, are you here for a bit? Or? Yeah, I can just go on six. And I guess we can. I guess while you're, while you're you're here, we can get the FEMA stuff just out of the way, because um, that'll be the most discussion. And I think the one thing that I kind of wanted to drill down into as we're trying to focus a plan is the mitigation funds and how do we get into that process. So. I can find out details okay. about that. Um, if you sort of caught the, the discussions, there's the mitigation through FEMA funding mitigation, um, and then there's hazard mitigation funding that's sort of an ongoing um, application process through the state. Okay. And if really for sort of both those funding streams, from what I understand, is any sort of work that you're thinking about doing. Since we're in the process of updating our health mitigation plan right now, um, we've got a meeting on July 10th where we are actually putting in the action items for things that we want to address. So if you all have like short specific statements um, that you could send to me, I can make sure that that goes into that that list of items. And again, I mean, when I say sh specific, it doesn't. But you know, rehabilitation of the falls, or how, however that might be worded. Um, the more that you can have action stated in existing plans, the better it is, because we have to sort of tick boxes for different um, different grants. And when you say, yes, it's in our housing mitigation plan, um, it's in our Wildcat River Management Plan, things along those lines, it helps. I don't know if, is any of the work 
going to be part of the capital improvement planning process that's going on? That the planning board? Because that's the only other plan no. aspect. So. I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe More so. Building. Well, the capital improvement is every year. Or you're talking about the long range? The thing. long range, the 10 year. I think of that as like, from what I see, it's more like facility kind of things, but I don't know how these overlap. So well, it falls in one respect as a facility because it's like a park. <laughs> well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. And so. it does have its own plan. Yeah. Right. So there's lots of plans. <laughs> but we can, I think we can relate plan to them. So. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Short two sentence. If you look at the hazard mitigation plan that's on the website um, right now, for the town, it's on the emergency management page. I think it's like pages 93, 97 or so. You'll see this list of all the different action items. And it's all kinds of things from um, making sure that we provide information about. You know, flood insurance to making sure people keep the drivers cleared, 911 signing. So it's really available for any, any different sorts of mitigation of hazards and emergencies. Okay. So. That's on you. you that, or did that meeting is on the 10th? It's on the 10th, yeah. And then. Um, Trying to find it. and then on the twenty fifth it was the twenty fifth. That was the next day I was gonna mention. Okay. Yeah. So on Thursday, July twenty fifth, um, at ten AM we have a site visit scheduled with FEMA representatives. If all work is complete, then they're not going to come. It's focused on incomplete work, which depending on what happens with the roads, I think as I stated in that email. It looks like the only incomplete work would be the sod placement mm -hmm. at the falls. So. And that meeting is July. July 25th. Is that sufficiently incomplete for them to come? Well, that's what I'm going to be explaining at another meeting I have. Like, this, is, this is where it's at. Um, but the fact that it's, yeah, it's not complete, it hasn't been expended, those funds haven't been pay yet um, it is incredible. we don't even know what funds we have we haven't yeah we haven't installed anything or right or just anything yeah. right and so this is what it's mm. so you're waiting for the funds so the work is not complete so and that's a pretty significant part yeah so from what I understand they are going to come cool. it's incomplete so it, it is yeah you weren't going to be doing that beforehand no, and I, I think this is getting into the, the like the parsing between the restoration and mitigation. Yeah. And it's like, well, we're not going to do any restoration until we can go about the fuller mitigation aspect. Right. However, we might to be discussed at this meeting is buy the plastic chain to put up to replace. Remember we. Use that little decorative fence, and, and I know they had trouble with that. But, but essentially, the we were using that as crowd control. Right. And now we're we're going to buy crowd control chain. So, so we, yeah. Did you? Well, I think in our, our last meeting they said that they would pay for that, but they'll only. Oh, they pay. did. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah. That, that's how I was just saying. I don't know what have been. Because that'll be about a thousand bucks. Yes, but. Remediation versus mitigation. So they'll pay for what was lost in the storm. We put it in, but what we lost was that little fencing. Yes. So So all we're doing is changing the little fencing for a different same purpose thing. There's also a linear footage aspect <laughs> because yeah. they required GPS coordinates for Every, so they, they have a hard like linear footage of what was lost. So this we is can't getting, do it because it's lost. Yeah. Well, I, I think this is getting into the, the parsing between the two yeah. separate projects and being like, well, if if we're replacing 
like for like or upgrading and they're paying for what was lost and we're this is getting into the like the weeds and it, yeah. it has still not been sufficiently explained how you separate these two processes. Okay, so when you're specific, yeah, so that, like the instance of that fencing is a perfect example of how we're trying, how you're trying to understand between the two. Right. Okay. So we're, we're, ex the, the area that we would need to, the materials that we would need to cover mm -hmm. in our mitigation efforts mm -hmm. are significantly more than what is going in from what we're requesting for restoration. Right. But we're not going to just replace what was restored. So if we end up expending something beyond that, then is it just a simple reimbursement of what we can say, this is what we restored, this is what we mitigated. And it seems like it should be that straightforward, but it, it has not been. Yeah. So far. Well, it's pre-disaster conditions. Okay. So you're saying that you had a thousand feet of fencing. Well, whatever it was, it was a very long fence. The entire fence washed away, but it was actually this point to point GPS coordinates that were most important. Uh, I, I just gathered in, in the meeting where they were like, we need to have specific coordinates yes. where things were lost. And I was like, we can't, we didn't have a thousand feet of fencing loss. Yeah. We had this much loss, yeah, but we need a thousand feet of fencing for, for, the what, whole. for what we're doing. So in the request, yeah. it was like, well, we only lost this much, but we need this much. Right. How, so like going forward, it's like, well, we're, we're going to continue to do what we're doing. Yeah. But where do we get reimbursed on that if they're reimbursing us on this part and not this part? Right, so that the hazard, so we're specifically right now dealing with the actual damage itself. Right. So then the next stage, the hazard mitigation fund stage, sounds like you're ready to get going on that. Yeah. I mean, you say hazard mitigation. So it's the erosion control. Right, oh, in okay. term, right, in terms yes. of the falls. Which is federal yeah. dollars through the state. <clears throat> right. But there's like this 404 and there's 406 hazard mitigation funds, and this is where I need to clarify if it is related to a federal disaster declaration, it comes through, from what it sounds like, a different, like direct from FEMA. It always seems to go through through the state. But then there's just ongoing hazard mitigation funding that the state receives that could be to address hazards that aren't directly related to a disaster. But we have to apply and you don't know whether you're going to get it or not, correct? Oh, totally. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Because it's very competitive. It's, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, well, you can apply. It's very, yeah. It's are you very applying very to FEMA and the state? Excuse me? Applying to FEMA and the state, or is it one of the same? It's all in the same. So you have a FEMA representative, and you have a state representative for the public. This is through public assistance funding that this is going through. And so the state has some additional guidelines that I just learned some new things about. Um, so if, like the FEMA representative, she was recently working on disaster in Guam. Now she's in a new state. In a new part of the country, and so she's oh, yeah. learning about different things in New Hampshire. Yeah, that's pretty different. Very different. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so is it sort of like if you lived in a spot that was slowly eroding, you know, and these 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 new storms that we've been getting over the last say like, ten years are worse, but you've never qualified. It's never been one that's been such a storm that you qualify for any money. Yes, you're trying to continuously improve this damage, but then you get this big storm. Right. The big storm is not saying, hey, we know it used to be like this. And after the storm, it's like, you know, vertical walls now. Right. They're more thinking like, 
you were washed out to this point. Yeah. Now you're here. We bring you back to there. We're not going to pay for you to come all the way back out. That's so. That's exactly it. It's well. Like where you were, we'll get you to there. We'll get you to pre-disaster conditions, but then beyond that, now we're looking at the mitigation of that. Right. And I think that's something that was one of the things. The very very first call, there was a representative for the mitigation department, and one of the first things that was asked was has, you know, have these different washouts on, you know, the different roads. My house things. washed away yes. in the flood. I can't put it back because the whole area is gone. Yeah, well, there's that, but also, well, did Carter Notch cave in before? No, actually, it hasn't caved in at that location before. So right. that is, again, another tick, like, oh, obviously, this seems to be... This was extreme. Fun. Yeah, I mean, it was really interesting because all the different action items that we have in our 2019 plan, hazard mitigation plan, Few of those were like Sugar Hill Lane, you know, caved in half of it. Didn't have that culvert on there. I mean, right. things were flooding that we, you know, Gary had never anticipated before. Yeah. So, um, so there's a lot of work being done on looking at. I mean, I guess the reason I just brought that up is that if this last flood damage hadn't happened, it wouldn't have. We were still on a plan to mitigate. Mm -hmm. Regardless, yeah, I mean, if there, if there was money right available there. to us, yep. so it's, I'm just like wondering, are we talking about, you know, we're going to be doing this anyway, this is just an opportunity to maybe have right. funds come that we didn't know possibly could be available. Well, I, yeah, I guess I'd look at it a little differently, and that is, <laughs> yeah. if we're only going to get a thousand bucks, it's not worth the effort on our part to get that's, some books. That's my point. That's kind of where I'm getting. I'm like, but we need some guidance whether that's what they're telling us. Like, because then they're just a thousand dollars. It's worth it. Right. I mean, yeah. that's, my point was like, we're waiting. we knew we had a problem. We're trying to solve yeah. the problem now. There's this way to maybe get some help, but it's like. But we all knew that climate change and greatest storms that that was as known as what we know about Jackson Falls. There's, there's nothing brand new about that. Yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, it's looking at what's going to happen with the, it's not new. with the old town hall. Yeah, It was determined that's mitigation funding. So how they're going to pursue that, I'm not quite sure. Because you're not going to put it back where it was. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what they're going to do. You know, moving the building and you can't just move it a little bit, you know. So, yeah. so that was, yeah, that was brought off. And they were covered by insurance for the damages that they saw, so that pulled off the well, public assistance. Funding, with, so. Without leaving Jackson Falls with just yellow tape strung out there that mm -hmm. looks kind of ugly, mm -hmm. are we wise to just proceed ahead and buy the chain and all that sort of stuff? And if we get reimbursed, we get reimbursed, and if we don't. But right now, it's pretty ugly up there. Yeah. We can't wait a year for FEMA to tell us what they have to do. Well, and that's exactly it, that there are safety issues, there are things that have to be dealt with, and they understand that, and that that has to happen. But, I mean, we did say it was a specific thing that was going to be purchased, or pretty specific, and that do you want to, I mean, I can run that by and see chain versus the fencing, or? Yeah. I I think is it get into a specific product product or a specific purpose for the product and it's maybe one's less per linear foot than the other two. The chain might cost less. Um, a bargain hunt. See I, I thought you oh, all yeah. and Ben especially have been super helpful with getting me all the information to upload into the portal and now I just saw today there was something about they needed a materials list and I sent that information. So now it's like, do you need more specifics? Um, so that's where I'm at. But the way things have been described, I just, if you're going to a chain, I just want to make sure that we're telling them the materials that we're going to get and not get something else. So. And it's called crowd control chain. Crowd control chain. Perfect name. That's really what's As about. opposed to decorative. Yeah. Yeah. Crowd. All I did is I had to justify, so I put down and pull what the. I mean, I can literally just uh, change that on the. Uh, yeah. On the description there. The same, same 
It's to say, it's to protect the people. Yeah, from hurting themselves. No, we, yeah. I think Natalie was on board with the fencing, I think. She oh, she definitely was. Yeah. yeah, it was when it was described as decorative, you could just see kind of all the fun. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was just being honest about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's true name would go. Yeah. Just, but it's got a serious you know, purpose. Of, yeah. Um, it's got a different code number next to it now. Totally. <laughs> it's all about the code. People safety. That's right. Um, yeah, so that's really all I was sort of coming to cover or answer any questions. Um, outside of that that July 25th meeting, there are no more additional meetings scheduled at this point. Um, I think we're getting to the end of hopefully you hope. this. Yes. Um, I am going to be um, out of town at that July 25th meeting, and I won't be able to be communicated with at all. So I've hopefully made certain that everything goes through Julie in terms of if there are any changes on those visits. So if there's any questions. Um, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll try to make sure I can make that. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I think I can make the target. The tenth, I can't. Okay. Yeah, the tenth again. Um, if you're able to send me something or you know the ongoing mitigation. So you want those listed for the tenth? You want it listed as action items? Yeah. Just two to three. Protect people. Protect plants. Taking the yeah, taking the steps to protect people and crowd control. Keep the falls from sliding down. Yeah. Right to the funding sources. All right. Okay. Yeah, hopefully. But thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, well, thank you guys. There's a lot of information to get. And um, yeah. hope that'll be it for our lifetimes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. See Take you. care. Then, with that, I would propose that we authorize spending up to $1,000. I, I went on the Lowe's website. We can get yellow or white two inch link chain and 500 foot rolls. You can get blue for $175. Or you can get blue for 234 They do not have green chain. Yellow might be the better hmm. color or white. Or we can pay extra and get blue. I was kind of thinking the blue would be nice, but. I don't think. But, Ten for that small ten. difference in price, I would go with what we think is best. Yeah. Huh. I, I, I mean, I, w I would go for the most neutral color, but if it's... But white and yellow are not as neutral as... Yeah. So let's go with... So that's $234 for 500 feet, which is essentially around 470 then we probably want to buy some links between the chains. I don't know if we need them or not. Mm -hmm. um, I got the price for the yellow and white. I think for some reason blue is more expensive. I don't get it, but uh, well, yeah, it's probably going to cost 20 bucks, so roughly 60 bucks if we bought a box, three boxes of 10. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need a lot of links, but I think it's good just to have them. If the chain breaks, we can link them back together. And just what we don't use immediately, at least we've got in reserve. Um, so, and then in addition, post gets to be expensive depending on what we do. But it also gets, as I looked at it, it's going to be a challenge also because buying some stuff that's a little flimsy, we're going to have real difficulty pounding them in. Mm -hmm. um, and there were a couple of things I first looked at. So yeah, the, that probably work, you know, like garden stakes, mm -hmm. the more heavy duty, but you can't pound them in. Um, get pushed over. So I ended up with sort of the conclusion, you know, the the sort of U-shaped 
metal posts that you can use to put up like fencing on. You know, it's got the little hooks that go both ways. They're green. Yeah. Okay. You mean the garden stakes? Uh, they're metal when they get the yeah. And then at the bottom they got the little flange on yeah. the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those to get through a thirty-six inch hop tall, which is a bubble you want, is is uh, four bucks. Four ninety eight, so five bucks. And then I figure, well, you probably want one at least every ten feet if we're going to do a thousand feet. So that's five hundred bucks right there. Hmm. If you go to something that's fancy, you're going to be spending twenty, thirty bucks a post. Um, and then you're going to have the problem of. Because we're really in rocky areas. The, the nice thing about like the garden fence is, is you only have to find a tiny area that'll penetrate. If you get into fancy right. little posts, yeah. and we're working with a lot of ledge, it's just going to be more difficult to find a place where we just get the damn things in the ground where we want them. So, I at the end of that, I sort of thought, well, okay. The powder the green, and then we'd have looks like we'd have blue fencing. We could go to another distributor and get green chain. Mm -hmm. I just want to look at Lowe's. I don't. Do we have an account with Lowe's or um, or online? Yeah, there's like Granger too. Companies like that. Yeah, that's. I, I saw a couple of those as well. Um, Paris Farmers Union. Yeah. Did you stay um place up in Berlin? That's where I got the post for back there and then delivered them to the town garage. Yeah. So, you, you know, a hundred of those is... One post is a tough call. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the oak grade stakes that we used for the caution tape, I, I didn't run into anywhere where I couldn't drive those. What were they? They were just like oak, square, like, like they had a, they had a Paris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the only problem that I see with those, and correct me if you think differently, and that is they may only last two or three years. They'll rot at the bottom because they're not, unless we took them and spent time pressure treating them or something. But at least from my experience, when you put those on the ground after a while, within a couple of years, you're back replacing them in the steel posts. You, you get a lot more tenure on them. Yeah, I, I would just think more about it dealing with the ledge there. Like I, I think either one we can put in, but when I started looking at, you know, posts that we'd like to get, all of a sudden, um, you know, it begs the question, how long do you want between posts, but I, my guess is 10 feet is probably about what you want. You need something sturdy. Mm -hmm. You need something sturdy because yeah. those fences I have are constantly going down, constantly. The garden fences. The ones that we put in up at the falls. Not here. Oh. These are fine. Yeah. Yeah, the mm -hmm. the wire fences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd go with the garden stuff that Ken's suggesting. So well, later on, we can always, you know, go for a grant or something to get something nicer, but that's... It's not attractive, but it'll do a job. If we had a real budget, be different. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I'm, I'm just giving my homework. Yeah, I, I don't know if I could, if I'm sold on either. What on the um, the wood stake or the metal stake? I just don't. No. I, I don't think the wood will do. I don't think the wood will cut it. Just. From the usage that the falls get, I just think it's not substantial enough. The other one. Now, <coughs> you put those cedar, cedar stakes down there, like they have for the other ones, yeah. beautiful. You can get small ones of those. Those yeah. would be nice. Much smaller, but they probably just will take log length. And if it's too low to the ground, you can step over them. You want it yeah. up about table height. My thing is for the visual cue, is that's. That would be that would just just to direct people to, like to know where the paths are going, so they're not cutting out early. Which is so like once we get sod down, so to 
protect that area where the old table was. If they, if they know that they can get to where they're wanting to go, if they just follow this pathway rather than trying to duck down early. So I, Mary, I guess the resistance being just ugly. Yeah. <laughs> Flimsy. The metal post, I think, will hold the chain better because they have that little flange on the bottom. I'm concerned with the, the wooden post. I mean, it's one thing to have a surveyor tape, but even the surveyor tape, some of those are down already. The metal would definitely hold better. The cedar post would be the nicest looking. I have a hard time imagining you can drive those in. But. The metal? Yeah. Well, if we can't drive the metal in, we can't drive any post in. Unless we have. Uh, it's like what you have out there? Those that have that, like. It's got that thing at the bottom. And you have to. Yeah, I know. You're going to keep moving and moving and moving until you can get it in. Yeah. That's what they had to do out there. Because that field is all rock. It's not the recommendation I wanted to make, but it is the one I'm making because I don't see a lot of great choices. I know. I wish we could do like a one inch galvanized pipe or just mm. pipe. That's a possibility. That's nice. But I don't know what the cost is. Neutral. Yeah. Drilled into the You ledge. could drill a hole too for areas you can't get in unless you know a hole the size to And drill. it doesn't have to be yeah. big because you know, the pipe will be like No, you yeah. probably be a one inch, one inch pipe. But then we're going to have to find a way to drill a hole in to put a hook eye on it. Um, for the chain. So you just drip, so you'd have a hole through the top somewhere and then you'd be able yeah. to yeah. Or a ring or something. And it just seems Can you access low nice. more suitable for what's there? Because yeah. there's already a old pipe. My guess is galvanized pipe would be pretty expensive to put. Yeah, you own. could just get black iron. You'd want it to rust. I wouldn't even go galvanized. Black iron would be nice. Yeah. It's not cheap. Steel is but I mean unfortunately it's like Get that, yeah. Well, that's the steel post. That's not true. These are, well, these are powder coated steel. There'll be a lot more steel in it. Yeah, so I just hope. Yeah, I just don't think wood would cut it unless it was I mean, a the thing that's a shame is there's about a thousand feet of it at the dump that just get thrown out. <laughs> Chain? A thousand feet? No, with no. a black iron pipe. just gets pulled out and replaced with plastic. No. Oh. It's litter, I mean, it's everywhere. But when you need the amount that we need, it's not everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hold up to it, but. The difference between that and the It's like a 48 inch. <laughs> that price. It would be 15 to 25 per piece. Per piece. Yeah, that's, I mean, if you're buying some sort of bulk, like people like called Isaacs and Steel, you can see what they, you know, one of those guys, one of those companies. So how high are you looking at for a stake? Is it three feet, three and a half feet, the table? That's usually what crop control is, that's somewhere around feet. table time, yeah. Okay. It's just one of those things that somebody's sitting on it so much. Black so hat pipe. Oh, yeah. I'm going to ask Andrew if he has it. Yeah. He does or he, if he has a sort of, he knows somebody that sits on it. Yeah. I think, I quite, yeah, I mean, the other question is out there. We, we shouldn't rush it to make the wrong decision, but vice versa. You know, until we make a decision, we're going to be with what we have up there right now, which is pretty ugly. Well, no one's I guess complaining. It, yeah. it's fine so long as we can get some. They love good. the falls yeah. either way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is right now, right? No one's turning around if it doesn't look as pretty as they want it. Yeah. Chief Brody was ticketing a whole bunch of motorcycles that were parked on Valley Cross Road <laughs> when I went by the other day. Yeah, I saw somebody in the Jackson parking spot that just clearly they knew what they were doing. Right. They were just like, well, we'll go for it. There are like five or six motorcycles, you know, even behind the barrier that said don't go toward the bridge. Well, I just think that's a much nicer look. Mm -hmm. And it's 
goes with the, the goes with the falls because there's black pipe coming out of all sorts of different places. That's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that. Mm. And it'll also be a little bit easier to have a nice Drawing. clean attachment and just have a little weld or something to clip the links to. You can I, have them pre you could just yeah, you could drill it out and have a eyelet. Mm -hmm. Well the challenge I think though is we want to get that cost into FEMA because we may or may not be able to recover it. But I think we should I, I think that, that Yeah, I was going to say, I think that yeah. that falls into if we're getting anything, it's going to be like 300 bucks. Yeah. Pizza um, party. Which is, again, not. <laughs> Pays for food for when we're doing the work. That's right. I mean, so if we wanted to go with I don't want to say half measures, but just incremental measures. If we were to get chain there, just do a section of chain and see how that worked using a knot is a expensive stanchion because then we can just swap out the stanchions i just i do get concerned that we keep relying on people sitting at the table here and most of us i mean i went down and moved chips but we just aren't able to show up to do a lot of we're yeah. we're ending up with volunteer solution we're not ending up with people volunteering to do it yeah I could hardly make my meeting today. Yeah. That's just, it, that's reality. I get nervous when we start getting into multiple steps. Well, Gary has always offered to continue to have his crew available to us. Except when he's really, really busy, which I think he is. Hmm? He's really busy right now with culverts and stuff. I think. No, I mean Gary Spears oh, Gary. and Eastern Greens. Okay. Just saying, he, he always says, please. Okay. Ask and I'll see what I can do. Uh, you know, we have, there's a cost associated with it, but yeah. he also stands behind everything he does, and, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. I mean, Did he fix the fence? I didn't. He, we I don't know how that worked out. He said that the town mentioned something about there being a permanent. I think. And if, but, but if, and yeah. He said, "Well, I'm going to order that. I'm going to get the post anyway because something else gets broken. You have them." But, yeah, it's just replacing what's nothing new. And if he can just give a cost so that we can build the, mm -hmm. the file of insurance claim. Mm -hmm. There's not a timeline on it, but they just want, mm -hmm. Julie wants that, just to take that off her plate. Okay. So, but if we hire Gary to do the fencing, and I'm not saying we shouldn't, I mean, to put it up, we have to tell him where to put it. And we'd also have to, would make it more expensive because labor is not cheap. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I really had to do this before or after we put the saw in. It's also a matter of maybe you just. I think you put the saw in. You go through and you lay Even it if the posts are in, you can just take the chain down and move through and then put the saw down and move back. Yeah, you could also do it where you lay out and you set as many easy pipes as you can or whatever the posts are and then say, this area is difficult, this area is difficult. We should have Gary come in. And they can drill it. You know what I mean? Like we just do what we feel yeah. we can accomplish. So that there is some legwork done, and they're just connecting the dots almost. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, let me suggest I'm going to be gone from the ninth through the nineteenth. This month. For this month. And we don't meet again until August first. Should we? make a vote to expend up to X thousand dollars so that people can do the homework and proceed to start to get the materials because we wouldn't even, otherwise August, we're not really doing it until September or October. That's just the reality on the calendar. Yeah, so that's what I was saying, the incremental approach being like, if we get the chain, if, yep. if we're, we're Decided on that, we can do that. If just string, string it up with what we have, and maybe buy some more wooden posts for the time being. If we don't have a cost on, like, I mean, I like that pipe idea. 
And you make it semi-permanent too, it's like... Yeah. Like a book. You take them back out too, mm -hmm. reuse them. Yeah. That's another nice thing about it. I'll sell you all the pipe I got. $19 a foot? Sure. Um, yeah, I think that I think that would be a nice way to do it. But I think it, it does go well with what we're trying to do there. And with the blue chain. Seems so almost organic. Well, we, we can get it. Yeah, the chain could be any color. I mean, we don't have to get locked into blue. I'd like to see it, I think. Just go online, yeah. And I, I, I think green or brown would blend better. Yeah. We just have to go to a different vendor yeah. if we, we get yeah. a different color. I think brown is probably the kind of forest service neutral. Match the parking signs. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and if brown isn't available, then green. Mm -hmm. So, by, and I don't know the expense, but assuming that it's probably up there with the blue color, um, I would make a motion that we buy a thousand feet of brown or green crowd control chain. And you can get it like one inch, two inch lengths. Um, you can convince me any length, but I, I think you don't want it yeah, too, too short a length, yeah. but I think somewhere around two inches is probably mm -hmm. like that. Um, that we could spend up to, let's say $700, that's a safety valve, to buy a thousand feet. And just have, Ben, how would you do that? Would you just order it? Uh, I can check and see. And how do you charge it so that you're not caught from paying for it? Uh, if we can go through Paris, uh, we can do that. I, 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 we can also just... You can go through Lucy too, I think. Yeah, Lucy, Paris, we have an account with. Both of them, I think, we have accounts with. Yeah. Them. Most of them have yellow because that's the common color. I've been, when we, when we purchased the post last year, I was just reimbursed for that cost, so... Either way. I, I don't I have a problem doing that. Paris has a good online. And I think we should be able to charge it against the Jackson Falls account. Mm -hmm. And then we can reimburse it when we get paid back. Against the plant where the wildcat that from? Then? Yeah. Okay. I'm assuming there's enough in there to do that. Yeah. And then when you, we put it in, the trustees of the funds would have to say yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I did check on the saw again. It's still, you know, seven dollars per square foot. I would suggest if we're going to do saw, we do it in the fall. Otherwise, we're into watering. Well, I think when I was talking with the guy who provides it, he said you're into watering regardless because if you don't have water in the fall, you still have to water. Yeah. He said you should look into getting a, um, like a, like you were talking about. Um, the waterings, you know, transfer a well, a, yeah. a pump. I mean, I have a pump at my house that I use for my frog pump, but it's electric and it's so much easier than bailing. <laughs> yeah, I think we can get that, and I think we can probably purchase that out of out of our budget. Mm -hmm. I'll look into that. So I don't know how many, how much saw you need. I think it's um, is it hundred square feet? If it's ten by ten. Ten by ten, the hundred square feet. So that's seven hundred dollars. Same as last year. So what it is, and then that's not including the materials that you have to, because you have to get soil for it to go on, because there's nothing there, and then peat moss, and I always put some, you know, manure down too. But it's kind of easier to get it in bags than it is to get a pile of it, just from past experience of having yeah. soil. I mean, from a volunteer point of view, it's much easier to use bags. So I didn't price the bags out. Um, that depends on the sod you have. Right. 
And that's also a question, do we have a little bobcat or something to help us move that quick? I can check with Bob again. But I don't know where the locations are, so it's hard to tell what you could even get a bobcat. You can move it down. You could closer. definitely get a bobcat in where the old picnic table was that was right. destroyed. We've yeah. done that before. Um, and then Ben and I had worked on trying to add to that island that was there. So we just used bagged stuff to get it down there. That's the problem. I mean, the, you know, the sod has to have a chance to get established. And we put in ferns, and the ferns were mostly, you know, just roots, and they didn't have a chance. I mean, we put them in the end of October and got, like, got washed out. And I, I'd recommend we use what has survived because it told us that the that works. Oh, yeah. But I think the, the ferns, blueberries and yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. I've seen the ferns work really well at <coughs> tin mine, but they were established. Yeah. These guys didn't have a chance. I mean, yeah, and I don't believe, and I think we were a different firm that's recommended over what was put there. Hay scented is what they've got. Yeah. And Gary Spears was the one who said, why don't you put hay scented in? Yes. So that's what we got. Okay, so we did. We, we did. got a, but we I had think, a chance. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't even two months. Yeah. And it got washed out. Well, but I think people hesitate more to walk over like blueberries than they do ferns, quite frankly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And ferns cannot take mm -hmm. as much foot disturbance as the shrub can. Mm -hmm. Well, if we, I guess, if we combine these. It, I mean, is is a hundred square feet? I mean, if it's a hundred square feet, why not two hundred square feet, or just a larger bite of that apple? Yeah. It's Do we need two hundred? Have you measured? I guess. I have. It really depends on what people want to put. I'm happy to like put it anywhere. I think the more the better. I'm about to start self-soothing here. Um, <laughs> it's going to start rocking. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I guess we have it on, on, on a motion on the table for 700 to spend on crowd control chain. And you seconded it, correct? I seconded it, sure. Um, that would just be the chain itself, not any of the stanchions, or okay. we can price that out. What it would be for the black pipe. Um, so just, I guess, seven hundred for now. We'll leave the saw. I, I want to have, I guess, a larger conversation with Mike and Dick right here about that. So there's a motion for seven hundred to spend on crowd control chain. Any other? Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Can we jump down to the wetlands violation? Yeah. Um, it it is it is that law across from the Red Barn Road. Yeah. They they never followed up with their thing, and I talked with. Um, Kevin at the selectman's meeting, and he said that he was down there, and the the guy doing the site work just dumped rocks in where the septic system is. So they don't have a septic system, and he said it's a real go over the other. And so the state is just following up to see because they've never they haven't filed anything. The, so. We've just been notified that the state is pursuing it. Okay. We also, um, I, I did, I just signed off on this because we had already discussed this for the um, trout habitation, um, rehabilitation that was happening on the tin mine parcel from Rick Vanderpool. Yeah, yeah. Came through. Oh, I did go there. Yeah. Good. So. Great. He said it's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of the third week of July. So if anybody wants to go. Cool. I mean, I think I'm on his list to let me know, so I'll let you guys yeah, know. Yeah, Unless somebody else hears before me. But yeah, so he said it would be 22, 23, 24 July. Um, I guess we can run through all these really quick. There was... Uh, 
the library said that their the path the mystery house loop and the, or the storybook loop had gotten really overgrown with poison ivy and the footbridge was kind of rotting through and Ellen Chandler went back through there. Well, Gary mowed back as far as he could, and then Ellen went and weed whacked through there, so that's being maintained by them. Um, so the town's doing that, you're saying? Town and ski touring is, is doing it. Yeah, we jumped over a prospect farm, are you? We can, I, the only thing I had on that, um, I, I didn't have. The we'll, we'll need to buy gravel. Yeah, sure is. and now I was going to make a motion on that. Okay. Um, I guess we can do that real quick. Yeah. I'd make a motion. Well, to update everybody, Forest Service can't give us permission to take gravel without going through all kinds of crazy hoops, and that's all sandy anyways. So we should be authorizing Gary to get a little bit of gravel to be able to spread where the new parking lot is up there. Um, um, we only need a thin veneer. It needs to be more down than a thin veneer spread out, I think. And some of the rocks need to be moved back. You know, where the, where the knotweed is, those rocks should be moved back so that there's more just head-in parking. I should know what that price should be. I guess estimating like how many yards would we need or what? Let's see, the car goes in twenty feet. Some of these new pickup trucks are like eighty feet. Um, what is that? About a hundred feet long? Five, six cars, hundred. That would be. Free pricing? Two like trains. Square feet. Gravel at. And the buying it at. Oh, um. And Gary will go for his credit. When he has time, yeah. Go on to, um. Uh, Burkhorn. I think they even show their prices. Um, yeah, it's fine. So probably be roughly a thousand cubic feet. They want it in yards. Oh, this thing yards is nine. Right? Yeah. Three by three by three, no, it's twenty seven. Twenty seven. Mm -hmm. Assuming six inches, two thousand feet, thousand cubic feet divided by twenty seven. Assuming that it's 100 feet long, 20 feet deep, which is 2,000 square feet, and it's six inches deep, um, it would be 1,000 cubic feet. And then 1,000 cubic feet divided by 27 would give you cubic yards. Can you say that in 1,000? One, 1, well, if it's 20 feet deep and 100 feet long. 37 cubic yards. So let's say, let's say 40. So that's 20 by 100 by 6 inches. I'm guessing 100. <laughs> no, that's not getting the weight. Yeah, that's what I did. All of their 
stone. Right, uh, keep the key iron in there, right? That's on there, long, long. Oh, yeah. Um, I can't pick that. And Gary may get a discount. Yeah, I'm sure he does, but... But that doesn't yeah. come out of our fund. I'll just do how much... Oh, we do get out of the bagel front. Let's see how much is it. How much is it? That's like 6,000. 50,000? Um, I just had the other one. What did you do? We said 40 cubic yards and roughly 2,500. Understanding the gear, maybe we should do our homework on this one before we vote. Yeah, I agree. Well, I was going to, yeah, so. It's Gary, from what I understand, is. Pretty straight out on other projects right now. Yeah, I get 50 tons. You divide that by 2,000. Yeah. You get 100,000 by 2,000. That is a ton. Yeah. And then 50 tons, and then roughly, call it, if you want know, smaller, it's $20 a ton. $1,000. Eight hundred and two thousand dollars, maybe. Plus delivery. That's when you pay the most. Okay. Yeah, it's like I, free. To I guess we, I, we can follow up with Gary. That we're we're thinking roughly fifty cubic yards of three quarter crushed. Or whatever we recommend for crushed product. Yeah, I guess. I guess because if you we'll, just we'll put defer yeah. Yeah. You're gonna want something more like burnt pack or something that's packs itself. If you just put three quarter, it just disperses. Yeah. You just keep pushing it out of the way. You want something that Well I feel like the it. product that we, we purchased a couple of years ago to use with the wood chips that is just sitting in the garage now that's designed to be used with gravel mm -hmm. for this Explicit purpose. Mm -hmm. We can ask if we can have it use it. So you're saying the stuff that has the um, hexagons or whatever was nice yeah. yeah. to repurpose that. Yeah, because it's it's not going to work with the wood chips, mm -hmm. but it will work with gravel. So. Mm -hmm. And that I mean, it's not even a real coarse gravel with the current parking lot is there. It's pretty sandy material. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's flat. It doesn't get erosion. Yeah. It doesn't get heavy. I mean, the traffic is just pull in, pull out. But it has to be something that will it's packed in itself. Otherwise, you'll just, as soon as you turn your tire, you're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there. which I think if we mine that sand mm -hmm. in that pit, they do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're saying sand and flush No, I'm just saying that it's, uh, it's pretty sandy up at that one barrel pit that the Forest Service has. Okay, now that we are jumping all over, so let's get with Gary and see what he, he Okay, wants. yep. Um, I, I did go up there and pull a bunch more knotweed, and I think I'm just going to take a tarp up there. Because right now I just haven't kind of balanced on stumps, and I feel like what I've done before, it may have just gotten blown back down and re replanted and reestablished it. So I was going to go up there with a weed whacker and just, it kind of needs to be mulled so people, because they're just growing up, but... I may or may not get to it before I take off. I've got a lot of other stuff. Okay. Um, what is the vine? Bittersweet? Mm -hmm. 
I got a ton of it that all of a sudden has invaded my property. Oh no. Do you have anything for the garden? Um, no. Okay. Gary's been helping us with the irrigation system. Great. Um, I did our first round of uh, wildcat water testing Ooh, last that? week. It's having some calibration issues with the tools, with the instruments, but I, I think I'm, I mean, there's, there's one of the tools takes like 15 minutes to warm up and it, it takes forever to stabilize. So it's like knowing when to do what test where. What is that, Leo? Uh, yes. Temperature and the, there's a couple of dissolved oxygen tests that that, that instrument does, but probably oh, conductivity, mm -hmm. DO, temperature. Yep. How was the? Um, well, it depends on the probe. Maybe pH. Maybe not. No, that's a separate. So we're testing the dissolved oxygen, pH, and turbidity. I think it was Phil Davy said he was testing for when he was doing it. I think it was the aggregate or something like that. Yeah, that was the, the most important thing for us to measure out there is bacteria. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The rest of the stuff. So bacteria you send into the test to the lab. If they're not doing that, we can do that on our own. Okay. So it's just the okay. The V wrap. Okay. Yeah, I think the V wrap is more just like a little science project. Okay. So how was the dissolved oxygen? I, I have to do it more than once just to see, like, because I got some weird results up at Maloon. Okay. Like turbidity issues up at Maloon. And I don't, I'm not. But the water was clear. And the conductivity was probably, what, about 30? Um, like 68. Is that high? That's still very low, but yeah. So we got that. Um, any your deal there should be pretty much 100% saturation. Yeah. Was, was there anything that came up at the Dundee so meeting? Nothing I want to share, Ben. It's just cascading over a lot of rocks and stuff, so it's constantly being aerated from that yeah. end. If anything, it might be super saturated. Uh -huh. It can be over 100%. Yeah. I'm going to jump to the Dundee yeah, Community yeah. Forest meeting. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a good meeting. Uneventful. Yeah, I mean. I don't mean that sarcastic thing. To me. Yeah, it was a bit of a kind of like a guided tour in some ways of the, the ham house. Um, it seemed like a good part of the time was spent just about what might happen with the house and what they're finding with the house and the property. There was discussion of parking lots, which seems like that'll be a that's in probably an issue of some sort. It like, seems like that's going to be. Some people are going to have strong opinions on where and how big and what the impact will be. Um, we did vote on not allowing bear, uh, bear baiting yeah. on the property. <laughs> um, there's a good discussion on hunting in general. I think most everybody was on board with. Quite a bit of time talking about invasives and just like, you know, having a plan moving forward before everybody starts to make plans about other things, maybe about protecting the property before we decide about how to utilize the property for, you know, recreational purposes. It's kind of like, hey, we have this, this space, we should probably think about what, what's happening on it. Um, Do you know if invasive support, including at the Dundee Forest, whether those can be brought up to the burn pit at the town dump? Town, town dump. 
they, I thought they used to, I just don't feel like they do allow it anymore. I think, I don't know if it's, I don't think anyone's allowed to take the soils from there. Because they have a burn pit. Mm -hmm. I, I looked on the website and it didn't, you know, it just said you couldn't bring construction material. Mm -hmm. But that's the perfect way to get rid of the invasive. Well, especially, I mean, if you can bring up, not say ignorance is bliss, but you're, bring up anything that's a, organic matter that's growing in your yard and somebody doesn't know one thing from the other, you know, not to say that's why you do it, but I imagine that you can, you know, I mean, if you're cleaning your yard out and it, it would be worth checking because, well, as we look at pulling, you know, we're pulling stuff out and the question yeah. is, what the heck do you do with it? Well, you take it and you put it on the pavement, let it dry for a couple of weeks to kill the roots, and then what? Right. Um, but then you really want to, you really want to burn the stuff. Yeah, just tell me to make sure it's just not poison ivy. Uh, yeah, that viability question is one thing. Because transporting viable invasive plants is not allowed, but once they're rendered inert, you can take them and burn them, which is the answer that I got from Doug Sigan. I asked him about this a while ago. But then what's the point? Is that right? Right, right. Once it's there, you know. I've pulled a lot of our cut a lot of glossy buckthorn at the falls, and I just put it in a pile. It never seems to take, you know. So sometimes you can just. Mm. I have a little bit. The bittersweet is the vine, if I recall. That's yeah. That's the one. That's a nasty bastard. Yeah. Because I pulled some out. And it just keeps coming. I thought it was done, and I put it over. And next thing I know, that's the new source. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't do it right. <laughs> Uh, one thing I was <coughs> surprised to hear is that some of the usages that they were thinking for the ham house that I just like never crossed my mind. Um, having someone live in it as a um, monitor of the site. Um, I guess uh, another one could be a, you know, just like the central hub. Where so is it a house with a bathroom? Well, I think there's some deed restrictions on what can be done. Okay. There, I believe it can't have electricity brought to it. Okay. I think it can't have, uh, did we discuss that it can't have a flush toilet? Maybe it's I don't remember that. The electricity, I do remember. And to be quite honest, I sort of, Ann Pillion, who was sort of listing it off, mm -hmm. kind of gave the list from A to Z. Mm -hmm. It was just sort of like, got a lot. The rainbow is the full spectrum. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And uh, it was more of, we're just open to anything that might work. Because mm -hmm. I think they're struggling with what will work. Mm -hmm. well, because be a lot of what they're talking about would take pretty big bucks. Well, that's what I was looking at. It's like an enormous amount of money to, to do something truly historic, like if you're going to. You can get carried away with your dreams, but you got to find the funding. Yeah. Yeah. That was my take. Yeah, and it's if you're gonna do it, you're gonna want to do it right, or you know, piece it back together as an old, you know, there on the farm. But you go to the next level. It's. Yeah, I mean, my conclusion when I walked out of that was, um, you know, this is kind of their project. Mm -hmm. um, Outside of, the, I was confused by that. It's, who's, it's who's a separate. Well, the ham, the the house has been sort of that. If I got it right, but I didn't, I like you wasn't quite certain because I haven't seen it, but it sounds like the Ham House property has been set away from the, so it's the rest of the deed okay. so that they can do some of the historic stuff because if it was in the deed, it would become more complicated. Yeah, it's like 1.6 acres. Yeah, so they I think. preserve that. So who owns that? I believe Upper Saco Valley Land Trust yeah. still owns it. Yeah. They separated it out. They but they separated it out. Because of the federal funding, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. The, um, Doug Burnell, I believe. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't, know if it was, I don't know when that happened. But yeah, yeah he kind of had the vision that it would be wise to have this be not under the same regulations that the other property might be under. So, so I think for us, it's just. Um, I don't have anything to recommend. Uh, I mean, 
I mean, kudos to them for wanting to undertake it. Yeah. But that's, um, I think we should just monitor it. And uh, if there's something there that really looked wild and out of place, then we could respond. But outside of that, if they come up with a plan, and I think it's going to take them quite a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the was, it was a little bit con as opposed to us meeting. Confusing and concerning about timelines that they felt they had to try to meet. And that's the part that I was sort of almost disappointed about. It's like, well, we have this written down that we have to accomplish these things by X and Y. And here we are behind the eight ball of it. It's like, they're just almost like... I think mates. that was, yeah, my, my take on that, Brian, but again, I'm not sure I'm right, was they've kind of built out a plan with timelines. And it's always good to have a plan with timelines, mm -hmm. but it's not like they're, if they don't do X, mm -hmm. like to raise the money, if you didn't right. raise by X, then the seller was gonna finally mm -hmm. say, I'm done, I'm walking. Yeah. So I didn't feel it was a, um, a drop dead kind of deadline. Right. Rather it's, they're just trying to be disciplined. That, that was my take. Yeah, I, I just know. think it's something that, yes, I agree with you, I, I agree with you, Ken, I think in the end that's kind of, I think there was a bit of concern when people were hearing, like, we have to have the kiosk in by X, and it's yeah. sort of like, these are things you really want to do. Some of that they may have to do because, like, the land was protected, you get these funding sources, mm -hmm. and so you have a responsibility to get some of that stuff up, but relative to the ham house, yeah. um, I, I thought we were hearing more self-imposed yeah, I think on the campus Deadlines. itself, but some of the other stuff with the property, I was just like, wow, like, it just seems... Like, it took us a long time. Well, I think, like, this is right. they got federal dollars and they got state dollars, and at some point, you got to put up a sign that says yeah. this was funded yeah. in part by. Right. Yeah, I mean, just hope it's, uh, you know... They have a history of doing it. Well thought out. Yeah. And I, mean, like us. Attend any meeting. I I really enjoyed it, to be honest. As a guy, I think it's a great group of people. Yeah. Um, I mean, they did a good job of pulling in a variety of different minds. I'm not sure if everybody, yeah, I believe everybody other than that, a couple were people just from the ham house. But in general, like the meeting at um, the Fosters was, I think that was good. So, the, the only other thing I had on that was just that Ann had brought up that there was, they had found another invasive and I've been talking to her about that. And it's not in the hand, it's at the, the Dane mm -hmm. site. And that was yeah, mentioned. That, that was the yeah. one that we were, they were trying to do on Friday. Yeah, so she's been working on that. Um, I mean, FEMA, if... You, Ken, you had said that Larry Garland had expressed interest. Well, no. What I said was, um, Mike? I yeah, I I asked him, and he said, "Well, is that a lot of meetings?" I said, "No, we probably need more bodies just to move wood chips." Yeah. <laughs> um, but I didn't go any further with it because I didn't. As I told him, I wasn't certain that we had an opening at that point. If Tom was officially stepped back. When did you talk to him? Delirium? Uh, it was at a mountaintop thing. I think it was maybe two weeks or so ago. Mm -hmm. He's retired. I know. He's he, retired. He used to be my employee. Okay. Yeah, okay. Very great. Yeah. Well, if he is interested, I think he, all, he just needs to send a letter, just send an email to Julian Select Board expressing yeah. interest. In Has it been posted yet? Uh, I, it was posted initially, right? Yeah. It. Because it, I haven't seen it in Jackson evenings unless I just missed it. Well, it was posted initially when they did all the oh, okay. initial positions. Uh, yeah. Then I will send him an email, okay. just CCU, and just ask him if he's interested in this. Is, you know, he would have to send a letter right. to this. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll put out a news item about it. I just, if someone had expressed interest, it could have an opportunity. If, if there's multiple people. Has someone expressed interest? No. Mm -hmm. So like you said, post it again then. Yeah. 
Okay. You know, I don't remember seeing it posted, but and on. Well, I, I will, I'll make sure that there's a because it, it's it's come up on the their agenda, the select board's agenda. Um, and then, we'll, I will be. I'm trying to coordinate a present pre presenter to give an invasive plant thing on the 25th at the community center. I, th I think the expectations for it is it's going to be a PhD dissertation and it's a one hour presentation. So I was going to ask if you wanted my updater. <laughs> I think it's going to be very. It's more of a kindergarten. Is the friend of uh, the vets? Well, she, she kind of demurred. She's just like, well, you know, I can, but if someone else is doing it. Uh, is there anybody from the extension co-op? I would think that's what they're for. So that's the other person I've been in contact with, um, Wendy Scribner, who gave a presentation at, for the Eaton Conservation Commission, and I just she said she she may be available to do it, and I asked her, well, if you can, that would be great. If not, if you have it, like a PowerPoint presentation, I can I can run through it. Yeah. She also just gave me an outline, and it's, it seems very basic, and we'll just sort of cover greatest hits. And I think it's. She take them on a field trip. She said that's real popular, but it's like it's an hour, and so if people have more basic questions, or I mean, it's very easy to take them out and show them the not we and bring them a, bring them each a sample. And say, yeah, yeah, they they say, yeah. <laughs> the Norway maple right in the. Uh, park over there, you get all the burning bushes out right in front of the post office. I mean, I did with the AMC, and they're just like, here, 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 <laughs> right in Jackson Village. Yeah. yeah. It was fun. Well, I'm a presenter. No, I'm not a presenter. Uh -uh. I'll give you my update. I'll give that a try. I'll bring a cookie. Okay. Well, we can, we can, I'll stick around for the final. Next meeting, August 5th. August um, Robo, Robo, Hank, do you have anything to say? No? Okay. Chatting as usual. Um, is there I have a motion? A motion to adjourn? To adjourn the meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, Ben. Thank you. Everybody has any extra time, but I'll move a few which I'll try again before I leave. But uh, um, it's uncertain. I'm I'm back in town for the next little yeah. bit, so I, I'll be able to get down and do some more of that. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah? No, just I'm back in town. Just keeping the cards oh, my, my family is gone. Okay. I'm hopefully I can get down here. Oh I didn't. I I did forget you forgetting.